This is the second part of our 3116 overhead video series where we're going to be measuring our injector height, our fuel settings, also doing the rack setting and its synchronization, all with a variety of tooling, some of which I'm familiar with, some of which I'm not. Hope you enjoy. So in the first video, we finished by installing all the injectors, and if you want to know how to do that, watch the previous video. In this video, we're going to be doing the rack sync, we're going to be doing the injector height and the fuel setting, and it's going to take all of the tooling you see before you. Now, I got to warn you, the tooling here is not what I'm used to using. There's normally blocks and different settings to set them up, but we can't find our tooling kit. Not sure if it was stolen or what's going on, but... So what I'm going to be doing here is a new procedure that uses two of these to adjust the rack sink, and I'm unfamiliar with it. Now, the first thing you need to do is remove this, which is your fuel shutoff solenoid. It takes a spanner wrench that Western States had just bought a new one of about six months ago, and it's missing with the tooling. Still was able to get it off there. I don't want to say how I did it. It possibly involved a hammer and a punch, but I don't want to say how I did it. So what we've got here is these are hold downs, and they're very important because the scroll that goes through the injector, you can see it moving, the little rod, if you move that without compressing the injector spring, it will damage the fuel system inside the injector, the scroll system, I should say. So those are what those hold downs are on the injector springs. Now, this was one of our problems. The battery's dead on this. Now these dial indicators came off the carpenter tool. Normally they'd be in the injector height kit, or not in the injector height kit, the rack sink kit. But like I said, we don't have the proper tooling set up here, so I was kind of making it work. I had to get, uh, yeah, that's a problem too. If you look at the length here on the rods coming out of the dial indicators, I ended up having to get a couple different adapters to make them work because they were missing out of the kit. But we're going to adapt and overcome here, folks. We're going to make it work no matter what. So you can see it's powered on now. My buddy Nick actually had uh, one of these batteries, which was surprising. And I was able to get a couple different uh, extensions for the dial indicator. Now this one's already been adjusted. And you can see kind of where the rod is connected to this uh, setup for the dial indicator base. And basically what we're trying to achieve here is if you look at the readings on the dial indicators, they should be reading the same as it moves through the sweep for the fuel settings. And this is on one and two cylinders. That's, if you look, they're about 0.3 off, or not 0.3, 0 0.03 millimeters off. You can have 0 0.05 difference, and that's okay. If you're trying to get it exactly, you're going to have a hard time. Just because there's differences, of course, in the base, in the injectors, so 0 0.05 is pretty good. Now, if you look here at the full rack sweep end, where it's at 10, they're very different. They're by off by 0.2. This doesn't really matter that much because this rack is never going to move that much because that's your fuel setting, 5.82 millimeters. That means the rack will really only ever move that much based on the horsepower. Now, if you have a very high horsepower, it might be moving a lot more than that. But basically on this setup, we really only needed to go about to six because our fuel setting is limiting it to 5.82. And we'll discuss that later when we do the fuel setting might be saying, well, this is super technical and kind of boring. Yes, yes, it is. However, if you're doing a 3116 and you have to do a rack sync because you replace the injectors or the rack, this is what you have to do. So you can see this one is 0 0.05 difference. So they're pretty close. As long as it's 0 0.05 up to about 6 millimeters or 5.82, you are okay to go. Now you might be saying, well, how do you get them to sync? Well, that's a good question. So what you're doing is you're comparing one to all the other ones. So you're always going to leave one of your bases on number one because, like I said, you're comparing one to all the other ones. So one's going to move, and then you'll go to two, three, four, five, six, but you always leave one of them on one. So you can see that I'm on number four, and I've already done two and three. And the reason I'm not doing, let's say, two to one is because I'm not as familiar with doing the system. Like I said, the normal one that I'm familiar with is the block setup, which we don't, that's the tooling that's missing. So we're kind of retrofitting it here. This is a proper CAD procedure though to do it with the, the dual dial indicator setup. 
So what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen the lock nut that holds the rack adjuster for that cylinder. And then by moving in or out the adjustment screw, just like you'd be doing an overhead, it's gonna change the position of the scroll relative to the rack. Now, what is what are you comparing it to? Well, like I said before, you're always comparing it to number one because they often move at the same time the same amount or else you'd have an imbalanced engine, right? Because that's telling each injector how much fuel to inject. Now you might be saying, well, Josh, your camera angle's really bad. I can't see number one. We're gonna fix that in a minute. But basically you can see here, as I move the adjuster here on number four, the numbers are changing. And what are you doing? You're just comparing it to number one. That's it. As long as you're comparing it to number one, you're okay. And you have to do obviously one at a time. So like I said, you're gonna always leave one of these setups on number one and then move to each injector. Now, if you wanted to start on one and six instead of one and two, you could do that, but I would start at one and two. So what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna change our position so you can actually see the number. Okay, there you go. So now what we have to do so when we first started here, we were 0.6 millimeters off from one to four. Now we're getting much closer. If you look at the two, we're about 0.1 millimeters off between one and four. And like I said, the difference allowed by CAT is 0.05. So 0.05, we're pretty close. Now if it was 0.06 or 0.04, are you gonna notice the difference? No, theoretically you'd want it to be complete parity, but that's almost impossible, even just by the angle that your, your base for the dial indicator is at, because nothing locks the base in one's particular uh, area. It's literally just bolted into the head through the valve cover base. So you're gonna go to zero, so they're double zero. Then you're gonna go through the sweep up to about six millimeters, because that's close to where your fuel setting limit is. And you can see, so that's 6.02 and 5.99, so that is very close. We're only 0.03 off, so that's actually fine. Now notice if you went to the full end of the rack sweep it'd be, where you're at 10 millimeters, it's gonna be off by more than 0.05, but like I said, that doesn't really matter that much. So that's how you do your fuel rack, or I should say injector sink. That is the hardest part, getting it set up, realizing what you're doing, now what we're doing here is we're doing your fuel setting. And to do that, you have to, rem you have to slide that um, tube back. It goes between the governor and the head. Then you need this tool, which is a pin. And that pin is gonna pull the rack to fuel high position. Now there's a special fork tool. This is not it. This is a pickle fork, folks. The special fork tool is with our tooling missing somewhere. So like I said, we're gonna adapt and overcome and make this work, folks. Luckily we do have the pin tool. So the pin tool goes through that uh, rack rod there. And then this pickle fork is really, all it's gonna do is hold that pin against the body of the governor. Like I said, this is not exactly the correct tool. The pin tool is correct, but the pickle fork is not. But the correct tool looks very similar to a pickle fork. So that's gonna work. So it's holding it with the pin against the body of the governor, which is full fuel. We're gonna go with that 5.82 millimeter measurement. Now, that is very important, and that is always gonna be on your valve cover. Now, if it's missing off your valve cover, you're in bad luck. What you need then is your serial number, and there's a way to look it up in something called TMI that a cat dealer can give you. If you don't have it, you're gonna have to find out from a cat dealer or get a new sticker ordered, but it should be on your valve cover sticker. So there's this one adjuster that is not connected to the scrolls for the injectors, and that's how you're adjusting your fuel setting. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it to, to a zero setting, zero. And then when you let go, you want it to be at that 5.82 millimeters. So that's what we're gonna adjust right there, that one. Like I said, that one's not connected to a scroll, the other ones were. You have to do this after you've done the sink on all the injectors. Basically the sink is what you have to do first, then you can do your adjustments. So you can see the number plainly there. 8.09, remember what our specification is, 5.82. So all you're gonna do is obviously that number needs to come down. Now, I'm not telling you to increase this number, but that fuel setting is basically what sets your horsepower for this engine. If you gave it a lot more fuel setting, like more rack, 
it would burn more fuel. Now, that could make more power. However, that being said, this engine is built for whatever the power is. And this was actually a very low horsepower. I think it was 175 or something, 150 horsepower. It's an industrial engine. So if you just gave it a lot more fuel, let's say you set this fuel setting to 10, your injectors would inject a lot more fuel. However, that doesn't mean that the pistons, the camshaft, the turbocharger are built for all that more fuel. So whatever is the specification, that's what you should set it to, folks. Don't just go in there and ramp this thing up. All you're going to end up doing is potentially damaging the engine. So you can see there we're pretty close. We're at 5.81. So we're off. Yeah, we're off by 0 0.01. And it's going to change a little bit because this setting here is it has a little bit more um, difference. I believe the specification allowed for 0.25 difference from the spec that is on the valve cover. So basically, if we can get it to read at 5.82, we are good to go. Now notice that the reading seems really inconsistent, like it's 5.57, we're but we set it to 5.82. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's a new rack. It could be that the pin is not fully holding against the body here because we're not using the 100% correct uh, holding tool here, unfortunately, but... Better than nothing, all you have to really do is hold that pin against the body. So if we can keep it there and keep it stable, we should be good. So what we're going to do here is just reset it again until we get a consistent number. So 5.71, that's pretty good. That is well within the 0.25 variance. However, I'd like to get it within 0.05 if we can. Is the customer going to notice? No but just for me putting it together. Now, is it better to err on the side of less or more fuel? I'd say if you have to go over or under a little, go over a little bit. No one's ever gonna complain that it made a little more power than they were expecting. And like I said, we're not talking millimeters here. We're talking hundreds of millimeters. So it's really not gonna be a huge difference. Looks like we got it there, 5.82 right on the money. Very with happy with that result. And that's how you do your fuel setting. So for the next part, it's our injector height. Now for the injector height, you have to have all of your rockers installed, which means installing them with all the push rods, torquing the bolts down, and generally you're gonna do your intake and exhaust valve adjustment here. I'm not gonna go over the intake and valve adjustment on this. It's 15 thousandths on the intake and 25 thousandths on the exhaust. The injector height is where it's important for this because valve lash from engine heaven is very simple and in general and uh, pretty uniform from engine to engine. What's different here is the injector height. The injector height is kind of complicated because the tool you're going to be using is the dial indicator with a base. And that's your injector rocker arm. And what you got to do is you got to pin the engine. We're pinned on number one, so we can do six, five, and three injectors. If you're on TDC six, you could do one, two, and four. Now, what you're going to be measuring is the height between that little ledge and the top of the injector spring. And you need a tool to do that. And we're gonna be using the dial, or not the dial indicator. Uh, well, it is a dial indicator, although it doesn't have a dial, but it's a digital dial indicator. So <clears throat> what we're doing here is you have to measure what height? 64.94 millimeters. See on the bottom of the valve cover there? Your valve cover sticker is important. So basically, what you have to do is measure, and it needs to be 64.94 between that ledge and the base. Now, you need something as a standard, though. This block that I was holding there is 62 millimeters. So what you're going to do is you're set up your dial indicator here, and you're going to zero it. And then you know that it is set at 62 millimeters. Now, remember what we're setting it to, which is 64.94. So what you got to do is basic math. So 62 subtracted from 64.94 is going to be 2.94. Now this is meant to measure depth. So it's actually, we're looking for minus 2.94 would be exactly where we want. And you might be like, what the heck are you talking about? Watch. So as your height would increase, it's, it's actually decreasing on the uh, scale here. 
So as it goes up, it's actually going to the minus, which is confusing. So basically, if we can see minus 2.94 or thereabouts, that would be the specification that we're trying to achieve. It'll make more sense once it is on the engine. Now, this is the Carpenter tool. This is not a CAT tool. It will work, but it the CAT tool is a little different, and I'm not as familiar with it. I haven't used this Carpenter tool base. It's a little trickier to get in place. I technically like the CAT one better. It's a magnetic base. It's smaller, but this one will work, and I don't have the other base, so... That's what we're gonna have to use. So there we go. Minus 3.37. So we'd actually have to adjust it for less height. Remember, we're trying to get minus 2.94. And that will give us our correct read. Now there's probably a way to uh, swap the minus and the positive. So we'd be reading 2.94 instead of minus 2.94. But if you understand what we're doing here, we're just trying to get 64.94 on the injector height. So I'm moving this, but that's not moving. I, I could see the spring was moving, so I don't think it is the height's not changing. I think our base is stuck or something like, oh, there it moved. But it's not moving uniformly. This is really frustrating. Like I said, I don't like this base very much. I like the other one, so. See how I'm moving the adjuster? It should be, there we go, it's moving. So 2.94 is what we're trying to get. I really don't like this base, folks. It is irritating. So we're going to take this back off and reset it. I don't know what's going on. It's like it's locked up. The base fits really weird. It like has a spring against the side there. And it's binding up. Like I said, I don't, I'm not familiar with this tool as much. I do understand how it's working, though. So let me see if I can free it, and then we'll try to readjust it. I don't know. It should be, the moving, the number should be moving up and down as you adjust it. And for some reason, it's really not. I, I don't know what the heck's going on here with this stupid base. It's, it's like it's locked. It's not moving up and down as I adjust it. You can see I'm adjusting there. Number's not really moving. They should be moving by point, like a lot, a lot more than they are moving. And it's really frustrating. So I'm gonna take this base off here and hopefully, so I'm adjusting it here. Look look at that, the numbers are just flying all over the place. This base is binding or something. What the heck's going on? Okay, so we've repositioned our base. It's not binding anymore. And we've got the number we're looking for. Finally, we got our adjustment done. Beep. Oh, there we go. So it's not the key switch, it's the button. So that was quite a procedure, huh? A little frustrating at times, technical and confusing, but in the end, we got it running. Hopefully it helped you if you're trying to do it. And as always, thanks for watching.